So you're going to the Philippines, but you're going to another country and you have so many questions. So in this video, I will tell you everything you need to know. So I'm about to drop a lot of information on you guys and it might be a little overwhelming, but don't panic. I've created a free download with all the information that I'm gonna talk about for you to download at the end of the video. So for number one, we have probably the most important thing is before you leave your country and travel anywhere, you want to call your bank and credit cards and let them know your travel plans so that way you have access to your money when you are abroad. It's a horrible feeling when you arrive in another country and you realize you forgot to do that. How do we know? Because we did it. Once again, we forgot to tell our credit card companies that we're going out of town, out of country, out of the hemisphere. So we just tried the ATM for the first time and it worked. Yeah. We got money! I, don't know how long it is. <laughs> I better call. If this is your first time to our channel, we are trying something new. We spend over a year traveling through Southeast Asia, documenting our travels with our travel vlog. So hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up and comment if you like if this video helps you out. Number two, money, local currency. If possible, you want to try to arrive there with a few Philippine pesos. So once you get to the airport, if your card doesn't work for whatever reason, you can get yourself a taxi out of the airport to your hotel. But if you don't get their currency before you get there, don't worry, it'll work out. They have the exchange places in the airport, AT the numerous ATMs, so you should be fine. Now, when you do get to the ATM, you are gonna wanna take out the max limit. Especially in the islands, there's not many ATMs. There may be one, two ATMs, and sometimes they don't even work. Or the lines could be 20 to 30 people long because there's so few ATMs there. So the best option is to take out the max and avoid all of the transaction fees as well because they charge, I, f I don't even know, 250 pesos every, every transaction. So if you just get out the max every time, at least it'll take you a few days because pretty much most of the places take cash only. Even some of the hotels only take cash. So that means you have to start days before pulling out all the money to cover your bill when you're checking out. So keep that in mind. So when we were in Moel Boal, we had to check out of our place and did not even think about the power going out at 8 a.m. and we were checking out around 10 a.m. And so we're just like, yeah, we'll go to the ATM, get the cash, pay her, we're good. Well, the power was out, ATM didn't work. Which means we don't have enough money to check out. <laughs> so. We're scrambling, putting all this together to see if we can have enough to give them so we can check out of this room. And we had to literally use coins, American dollars, anything we could scrounge up to get out of this place and travel to our next destination. So don't get yourself in that kind of a jam. Make sure you just have lots of cash on you at all times. Ooh, ooh, I wanna say something, I wanna say something. So, when you go to the ATM, this is a little hack that I kinda of developed myself, and you get this massive wad of money, you don't necessarily wanna be walking around every time you have to buy something, or, yeah, pretty much buy something. Yeah. You don't wanna walk, pull out this big wad every time. So what I do, is I take a couple off the top, put my wad in one pocket, and then I keep, I don't know, five, 10, 20 bucks just in the other pocket, so that when I do go somewhere to pay, I just go, hey, look, oh yeah, it's 10 bucks. Yeah, sure, no problem, here you go. And you're not pulling out your $180 stack that you just got from the ATM. Mm -hmm. Travel point. hack number one. Good tip, good tip. Good job, babe. <laughs> <laughs> number three, is it safe in the Philippines? In our opinion, we felt totally safe. Seriously, never once were felt threatened or anything. Actually, one, a situation we did have, we were in a tricycle riding, I believe it was to Knock Palm Beach, and I had Jimmy's phone under my leg in the tricycle. It's all bouncy and whatnot. Did not even know Jimmy's phone fell out off the tricycle. We're talking and all of a sudden a guy behind us is going beep, 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 beep on his scooter. And we're going, what the heck is wrong with that guy? What's going on? We look back and he's going like this as he's driving the scooter. And we're like, what is that? I'm like, oh my God, it's Jimmy's phone. I look under my leg, phone's gone. We go, yeah, what's up? He says, hey, your phone fell out back there. And he gives it to us while we're driving down the street. So, without this phone, we would be really screwed. That was amazing, good karma. It's just, it's just good, it's good stuff. That also, in his case, he has all of his credit cards. So that would have been really bad. That was our first week in the Philippines and we would have lost Jimmy's phone and all of his credit cards and ID. That would have sucked. So travel hack number two in this section is don't do this. Don't carry all of your cards in the phone. You don't wanna do that, because if you lose one, you lose it all. So just with any area, any country that you go to, even here in the US, everybody knows there's areas that you just don't go to because it's known to be unsafe. 
So just listen to your gut, listen to what's going on in the country, and just stay away from those areas. And be smart. Don't get wasted and go stumbling down the street at two in the morning, because at that point, who the hell knows what will happen. If you take care of yourself and you do the right thing, so far, everything's good. Number four, transportation. There are lots of ways to get around. I mean, you're going between islands. There's 7,000 islands there. Now, you're not visiting all 7,000 islands, but to get in between, you're taking flights, buses, ferries, tricycles. There's lots of ways to get around. So let's talk about the buses. There's two types of buses. There's air-conditioned and non-air-conditioned buses. Just a piece of advice about these buses. We took a bunch of them and seriously scared us to death. There was one situation where there was literally a typhoon coming in. We were traveling across from Cebu City to Moabal. That's a lot of ups and downs, switchbacks. And our driver must have thought it was funny to accelerate on all of the turns with like 2,000 foot drop offs. One of the locals in front of me, because we were like, what's going on? Oh my God. And she goes, oh, it's normal. They drive very fast here. You know, it's up to you if you want to do that. I think for us and our family, we, we took a private car with our next, des our next journey to down to Oslo. That's kind of what we're going to do. We feel more comfortable knowing that our lives are safe <laughs> or safer than in some crazy bus driver's hands, but it is cheap. So if you're on a budget, take the bus. I don't think they crash very often. Well, actually, when we were driving across to Mobile, literally saw one of those buses down in a ditch to the beach that had crashed like the week before went through the wall, down the ditch. So they do crash. And so all my faith went out the window after we saw that. All right, Sandy, you said one is really cheap and one's not so cheap. Can you give me a price comparison between the yellow bus that'll scare the hell out of you <laughs> and a private driver where you can take your time, stop at a bakery, get a coffee, and just enjoy the experience? Yes. All right, so the bus was around $11 total, which is super cheap, super cheap. But we were scared to death. The private car was about $40 US, and it was so nice. So nice. And comfy. And comfy. All right, let's go. We're going to the whale sharks. I love the whale sharks. The guy drove nice. We chatted the whole time. We stopped at a bakery. It was definitely the better way for us to travel. So you can use your judgment, whatever works for you. Those are the options. So the same thing goes with ferries. They have the fast version and then they have the slow boat. So of course the slow boat is cheaper, but for us, we rather just get there quicker because you know, I don't want to take six hours on a boat ride to save a few dollars. So in my opinion, time is money. I'd rather spend a few more dollars and get there faster instead of sitting on a boat for six hours when we could be sitting on a beach. All right, so now we have tricycles. Probably the easiest way to get around, especially on islands. It sort of reminds us of like a hermit crab. Like you have this little outer shell, which is where all the seats are, attached to a motorcycle. It's really cute. But those are the ones that you're gonna use just to hop in, hop out, kind of like a tuk-tuk. But you gotta negotiate with the prices on the tricycles because of course they're gonna start really high. You know, you ask the locals, what should this cost to go from here to here? Because I don't want to try to ask for a lower price than it's worth, but I also don't want to pay triple what it should be. So ask the locals what it should, what's the normal price to go from here to here, and then use that as your gauge. Another way to get around is a scooter. You can rent a scooter. They're about 10 bucks a day. Maybe you can get a little cheaper if you find a better deal. But scooters are definitely the best way to get around on the islands that it works because you don't have to pay extra, you know, to, to go somewhere and come back. You're just, there's a lot of money involved. So if you have a scooter, you have the freedom to come and go as you please. All right, so another travel hack for you. It took us a few weeks before we got comfortable enough to go rent a scooter. But once we did, we were like, what the heck are we doing not renting a scooter? <laughs> and everybody we talked to were like, just go rent a scooter. You'll be fine. It's amazing. It's the best way to get around. So when you go to these tropical islands and you see everybody riding around on scooters, no matter where it is, yes. Bali, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, rent yourself a scooter and have a way more better time. Way more better. <laughs> so now we come down to flights. You're gonna to wanna to fly, like say from Palawan to Cebu, Manila to wherever, and the flights are pretty inexpensive. So what I recommend is just booking your flights when you get there, because you know what happens is, you meet people along the way, and you're going in different directions. There's so many islands, there's so many different 
itineraries, ways you can travel the Philippines. You might book all your stuff out and then you come across, you meet a bunch of people and they're like, oh, you have to go over here. So you're like, well, damn it, I already booked all my trip going this way. So save your flights, book them when you get there. They're all available. Um, maybe book like two days, three days in advance, but the, the prices are pretty inexpensive. I would say they were about 50 bucks a person or so to get around. So you don't have to worry about booking everything before you get to the Philippines. I would leave some leeway in there. Um, so that way you have the freedom to, to change plans and go a different way if you got suggestions or met some people along the way. Another way to get around is Grab. It's just like Uber. You really don't want to use the taxis over there because they do tend to be overpriced and you don't really have any negotiating to do because it's just kind of the price. So Grab is a much cheaper way to get around. So accessible. Get the app. Number five, getting to the Philippines. So when you get to Manila, I recommend spending one or two nights there because if you're looking for that tropical getaway, it's definitely not Manila. That's the busy, crazy city where it's just kind of bananas. So I would say check out the mall, unless you have places that you definitely wanna see. One or two nights is more than enough and then fly out to those destinations where you're gonna get the beach and the palm tree. So let's talk about airline tickets for a minute to get to the Philippines. Everyone thinks that it's these crazy prices, it's gonna be $2,000 a ticket. That is so not true. I have gotten tickets for 400, I think it was $400 a person round trip from LA to the Philippines and back. So it is extremely possible to find amazing deals. I use Skyscanner and Kayak. That's kind of the two that I go back and forth. I may jump around to some others and see if there's anything crazy out there that I could find. But typically you can find going from a main hub in the US or wherever to Manila, I guarantee you can find some great deals. As a matter of fact, I have a video about how to find cheap flights right here. You can check that out. So if you don't have a round trip ticket, you're gonna need an onward ticket to prove that you are leaving the Philippines within 30 days. So what we've done is Expedia has an option where you can purchase tickets and you have to make sure it says it though that you can cancel within 24 hours. And so you print out the ticket after you buy it, cancel it within 24 hours and you're good. Cause you might want to extend it once you get there, you might want to stay longer, but what we had to do is when we were checking in to go to the Philippines, we did not have a round trip ticket. They wanted proof that we were leaving and had an onward ticket. So just make sure of that. So it is extremely possible to travel to these exotic, amazing locations at an affordable price. Number six is SIM cards. If you've heard about the Wi-Fi in a lot of other countries, Philippines is one of them, the Wi-Fi isn't so predictable. So you want to have access to whatever you need, whether you're booking stuff, looking for places to stay, you need that accessibility. So a SIM card is a perfect way to do that. You need an unlocked phone, and then there's two options for you to use, Smart and Globe. Globe tends to be a better signal, but Smart is what they say, it works in more of the islands. So you can check it out and see which one works better for you, but definitely get a SIM card because you don't wanna to have to rely on the Wi-Fi in your hotel or wherever you're at, because if it's not working, you're kind of screwed. So get those SIM cards. Number seven, download Maps.me or Google Maps, because that will be a lifesaver. We were walking around not knowing where the heck we were going until we download that on our phone. Once you got that, game changer. You now know where you are, what's going on. So if you don't have a SIM card or Wi-Fi and you have that downloaded on your phone, you still have the directions on where you need to go. Number eight is food. If you are a vegetarian or a vegan, you might have some challenges in the Philippines. It's a very meat-based country. You know, there's just not that many options. So you have to get creative. So one of the things that we found worked best was getting a place that has a kitchen, kitchenette, something where we can actually go food shopping, bring the food home and cook it, opposed to just trying to go find places out and about, you're starving, and then you end up eating white rice because there's really not that many options. Here's a food travel hack. And we've experienced this in many countries that we've traveled. If you walk into a restaurant and it doesn't feel very clean, very sanitary, you might wanna skip that restaurant and avoid any tummy issues that can ruin your trip for a few days at least. So Jimmy has a funny saying that if you have a drone, at some point you're gonna crash it. Well, we have another saying that if you travel anywhere in Southeast Asia, you're probably gonna get food poisoning at some point, so just be ready. Have all the stuff on hand, activated charcoal, whatever supplements you use to help you get through that because you wanna get it done as quick as possible. Number nine, accommodations. 
So a lot of people that backpack through Southeast Asia stay at hostels. For us, we are a family of five. We have three little kids. So hostels weren't really an option. So I typically use Airbnb, Hotels.com, Booking.com, Agoda. Agoda is actually my favorite. A little hack that I have found is that on Facebook, there are groups for, say, El Nido or wherever you're going, um, and you can actually maybe access owners of places directly. So you can bypass all of the Airbnbs and all that and the fees and just go directly to the owner of the place or the manager of the villa. So I would recommend doing that maybe before you even look on all the other sites. Just see, look, put in El Nido on Facebook, see if any rentals pop up and you can try that way because you could save a lot of money for sure. Another little detail when you're booking your accommodations is check the details to see if there's air conditioning and hot water. Because you know what? I got excited sometimes. I booked my hotel, wherever, and did not realize there was no hot water. And so we've had many, many cold showers. And guess what? The kids don't like taking cold showers. So they consider going to the ocean their shower because they did not want a cold shower. So if you like hot showers, make sure they have hot water. Number 10 is the water. So, you know, just like a lot of Southeast Asian countries, you don't wanna drink the water, you don't even wanna brush your teeth with the water. So what we would do is have a bottle of water next to the sink, we'd brush our teeth with that, try to avoid any problems, any tummy issues, and bring a reusable bottle of water because you can typically refill up in a lot of places that will save you from buying plastic bottles over and over again and is being better for the environment. So number 11 is travel insurance. When we were traveling, we did purchase World Nomads travel insurance, but I'm on the fence with whether it was worth it or not because the price, the cost of healthcare through Southeast Asia is so inexpensive that you don't even really need it. I spent, I think it was $700 for three months one time. Now we did go to the clinic and the hospital a few times, um, but overall the cost was only about 250 US. So we never even filed a claim with World Nomads just because, I don't know, I just didn't. <laughs> But travel insurance can come in handy for a crazy accident that you know possibly could happen. We saw a lot of people that were in bad scooter wrecks, bandages everywhere, IVs. I don't even know what happened to them, but they probably wanted travel insurance. So, you know, it's up to you. It might be better just to purchase it just so you know you have it if anything seriously bad happens. But overall, the healthcare is so cheap over there. Literally for $15, you can have the doctor visit, medication, out the door, 15 bucks. You know, it's your judgment. Number 12 is boat tours. Boat tours are a huge deal in the Philippines because there's so many beautiful islands. Wherever you are, you can probably take a boat tour and see amazing sights. You can opt to take private boat tours or boat tours where you have a lot of people. In that situation where you have all those people, you are on a very strict time schedule where you go to one island, you're there for about a half an hour, everybody piles back in the boat, then you go to the next destination, and they typically go on the same route. So you may go to one of the spots with a hundred other people. So it takes away from the experience when it's overcrowded, right? The private boat, you can just dictate what you want to do. If you want to stay in a place longer or avoid going to places that are packed at in the beginning of the day, you can start on the other side and sit and go to the less busy places. And then you guys cross each other. The busy boats go this way. You're going to that place and you have a much better overall experience. Unless you're traveling alone and you want that experience of being around other people, meeting new friends, then definitely go on the tours where you're with a lot of other people. But we are a family of five and we typically travel with other families. All of us together can rent a private boat and we'll be about 10 to 15 people, which is the same price as being a part of one of those bigger tours. So we love getting the private boat. The kids are having a great time at a snorkel spot. We don't have to just up and go because that's what the tour is doing. You can stay there as long as you want. You can skip spots if you want. So I love that experience way better. Now typically if you get the boat tour from your hotel, it's gonna be a little higher. I know we spent, I think it was $120 US for our boat tour in El Nido, we did tour A, that's kind of high. So if you ask around, you might get a better deal because a lot of the drivers, the tricycle drivers, if you start talking to them and saying, hey, I wanna do a boat tour, they might know somebody that has a boat tour and you bypass the concierge at your hotel and get a much better deal. And we got super lucky in Coron where the driver that picked us up at, at the ferry stop 
literally became our tour guide for the next five days, however long we were in Caron. So he took us on island tours. He arranged the boat tour for us and was on the boat with us. Talk to people, talk to the locals because they are amazing. They want to help you. And you never know, like literally we met Eric and he was with us to the end. He took us food shopping to the market so we can get prepared for the boat ride. That's another thing. Go shopping before you get on the boat. Sometimes they, lunch is included, but if it's not, it's really nice if you're out in the boat for six to seven hours, you want to have a lot of snacks. So go to the market beforehand. And so Eric, the guy that hung out with us the whole time in Corona, I lost his number. I know in one of our videos, I, I talked about Eric and everybody's been messaging, can I have Eric's number? And I don't know where the hell the number went, but it's not in WhatsApp anymore. But the good thing is that Eric, they are all like Eric. They are all super friendly and very helpful and they all have connections. So just ask, just talk and you'll, and you'll probably find an Eric of your own. Number 13, have loose change or small bills accessible most of the time because there are little fees here and there that you just will not see coming. And so whether it's terminal fees at the airport that you just doesn't say anywhere that there's going to be these fees, but there is going to the beach, there might be a fee that a guy is standing in the street collecting money and you're like, what's this for? And you don't know, but you have to pay the guy. Just expect that there's, it's going to happen here and there. Roll with it. I don't know what it's for, but just have your small change ready. 14, be patient. Travel days can get exhausting and be very long. There's delays, your flight can be delayed five hours, you're in a hot airport, the airports are hot and sweaty. So make sure you have water with you. But anyways, be patient on travel days because you know, it's, it's an island and everything runs behind, nothing is really on schedule. The more patient you are when you're going into it, the less frustrated you will be when you are there, especially when it's really hot. All right, I got another little travel hack here that I want to talk about. All right, let's do it. Know that the adventure lies within the adventure. And so some of the things that go wrong are some of the best things that we have documented in our travel vlog. So. Would crashing the drone be one of those well, things? That was probably one of our best, mm -mm. highest rated videos. And so that thousand dollar mistake was definitely worth it to make a video. That's how I look at it. We spent a thousand dollars. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that video <laughs> and wives. <laughs> but I just want to say some of the best experiences come out of some of the least likely places. So be open to having those experiences. Like another one, we were in Thailand and our boat sank that we we're supposed to go back on and it ended up being one of the best stories yeah. and best videos sure. we've ever experienced when something went terribly wrong. So be patient, be flexible. That's a huge, huge thing when traveling. Overall, when you travel anywhere, patient and flexible. Number 15, what time of year should you go to the Philippines? The high season is from November to April. Those are the dry season months, best time to go. But just be aware, Chinese New Year is the beginning of February. If you wanna go during that time, book ahead. Because when we got there, it was Chinese New Year and we don't book ahead. We never book ahead. We're very spontaneous. We go wherever. We're very flexible. But when something like that's happening and every place is booked, you're screwed. So know where you're going and know what kind of things holidays are happening so you can be prepared for that. Because we literally almost had nowhere to stay because every single room was booked in El Nido. And also the tours. You want to be aware. If there's lots and lots and lots of people visiting, you need to adjust to that and make sure you have stuff planned out in advance. 16, what are some major things that you should bring? All right, so for us, sunblock is a huge thing. It's really expensive over there and a lot of them have whitening, a whitening agent in it, bleach, to lighten their skin. I didn't want to do that. I want to get tan. I want to get tan. So <laughs> I don't want to get sunburned, but I also want to get lighter. So pack a lot of sunscreen. Another thing is a dry bag. You could probably buy one over there, but you, if you can get one on Amazon or wherever, dry bags are great, especially for those boat tours or beach days, because it keeps everything dry, change of clothes, towels, all your electronics, phone, wallet. You definitely want a dry bag because let me tell you, in those boats, we didn't have a dry bag and we quickly bought one after this happened. We had our camera bag with all of our camera gear in it, in the boat, during a boat tour. And guess what happened? Half the bag was soaking wet and we nearly had a heart attack. But luckily the, the outer of the bag was kind of waterproof. So it didn't get into the insides of the cameras yet, but it scared us to death. So make sure you have a dry bag so you don't have to experience that. 
And of course, you're going to the Philippines. You need a GoPro. You need those amazing underwater shots. But to get those underwater shots and avoid losing your GoPro, you need a floaty stick on that GoPro. Because one of our friends dropped hers and that little guy went a little too deep that most of us could not swim down to get it. Luckily enough for her, there was a nice guy that obviously had a little more experience and went down and was able to get it. But all of her footage was on there. Her husband was in the boat, didn't know that this happened. He probably would have killed her. Definitely do that. Holy crap, I just realized we are an Amazon affiliate. I will put a link to those items down below. The GoPro, the floaty stick, and the dry bag, and some sunscreen to make sure you guys are covered. Number 17, just so you know, in case you haven't been to anywhere in Southeast Asia, there's a lot of stray animals, a lot of stray cats, a lot of stray dogs, and they are friendly, they're fine, they don't try to attack you or anything, but just be aware, because they are everywhere. So just know that they are there, don't bother them, they won't bother you. Number 18, drones. Everybody today has a drone, right? And when you go to these epic places, you want to fly that drone, right? But in the Philippines, we noticed there was a lot of big signs that say, guess what? No drones. <laughs> no drone flying here. Just be careful where you are. Don't, if you see that sign, don't fly your drone. Be respectful. Oh my God, what number are we on? I cannot remember now. I think it's eight, 19, 19. This is the first video in a series of four. So make sure you stay tuned so you can have all the information you need to know about the Philippines. I think we're on 19. Number 19, the locals. They are amazing and speak pretty much perfect English. I don't think I've ever been to another country where they speak such great English. So kudos to the Filipinos because you guys are awesome. They are so sweet, so nice, so helpful. It's, it's a really, it's a pleasure to travel and communication is not a huge problem. So talk to everyone, smile, you're in their country. Be friendly, make friends. It's the Philippines, it's more fun in the Philippines. Have a good time. All right, my friends, we made it to the end. You are really gonna thank me for this one. You are going to appreciate the fact that you need to know that you need to bring your own toilet paper because most public toilets will not have any, none, zip. You don't wanna get into a situation where you have to go to the bathroom, you get there and there is none. Be prepared with your own toilet paper, tissues, whatever. Make sure you have some, make sure your guy has some. You wanna make sure you are prepared for those situations. So pack your bags, people. You are ready to go to the Philippines. So I know that was a lot of information and don't worry if you didn't take all the notes. I created a free download for you guys so you have all of the information in one spot. There is a link down below. So if you like this video, this is the first in a series of four. Thank you so much for watching. I hope all of these tips help you and keep you informed so when you get there, there's not a lot of guesswork. And definitely, if you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up, and show me some love. And whatever you do, of course, try something new.